Hi, I'm Emma Miller and welcome to episode two of Art This Week Bio's Conduit Gallery. In this series of videos, we explore the history of Nancy Whitenack and Conduit Gallery. Here we speak with the artist Robert Barsamian. Robert moved to Dallas in the mid-1980s and he has shown with Conduit Gallery since 1984. We spoke with Robert to give a perspective of what the 80s were like in Deep Ellum and what it has been like to work with Nancy for the past 30 years. Now for our interview with Robert. So you moved from New York to Dallas. Yes. Why did you move and how did that change your art? Well, you know, I spent close to, at that time, 18 years in, Dallas, in New York, excuse me. And the problem was that although I had some gallery representation, the majority of my time was trying to exist there. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make art. And I got really tired of constantly working, doing other things. I worked in the museums. I worked as a, an electrician, an alarm installer, so many different jobs that I wasn't concentrating enough in my work. The best send-off was that I had just had a show at the, uh, the Bronx Museum, my first big museum show. It went real well. So I was feeling pretty good about myself, but I still needed to get out. And I deci decided with my wife that it was time for me to travel, although she had just gotten a job she loved. So I said, you know what? You can stay here in New York. I'll go back and forth to no matter where it is because I don't want to take you away from your opportunity. So that was the decision we came to. And I came to Dallas because I had a friend who was here who offered me a part-time job. So I said, okay. Can you talk about what Deep Ellum was like, uh, what Dallas was like in 1984? So when I had decided to leave New York, I wanted to find some place that still had that bare roots beginning sense to it. I went to L.A. with my wife. We thought, nah, we don't want to live here. So my friend invited me down to Dallas. And, he's, and uh, we came down, we looked at things. We went down to Deep Ellum and we both, our eyes were wide open. I, and we say, boy, this could give us an opportunity. So, you know, we shopped around, we worked with different real estate people. Finally, we found a guy whose brother was in the arts. And he said, I have, I'm representing a few buildings down there. Would you be interested in looking? We went, short, long story short, we rented it with the consent of the owner to renovate. But we had to be secretive about it because the city wouldn't allow that to happen. Uh, because they'd have to rezone the whole area and you know those types of things do not happen overnight and so we decided to go ahead and do it and we found a very nice environment there and plus as Nancy was explaining to you earlier there was a community there that was already beginning to develop it had a real strong sense of the way Soho used to be and then my later experience in the East Village uh, in New York, that um, East Side, I should say, uh, that made me feel as though this would be the place to work. We could start from here. So that was the main reason why we went ahead and rented a space down there and f quickly became friends with a lot of people and very close friends with Nancy and David and Barbara and Jordan. Uh, the most interesting part was how I connected to Nancy, and that was very interesting because I first came down with my wife in 84 because my friend was getting married, and I had not been to Dallas before, and my wife said, why don't you bring some of your stuff down, see if anybody's interested, and I said, oh, okay, I'm not really good that way in selling my goods, so I said, okay, and I remember going down Elm Street and I saw Nancy's space and I thought, hmm, this is really nice. I walked in and looked around and walked back out and I didn't take my stuff in with me. And I remember she, there was a parking lot next to her building, which was located next to a photography studio. And I sat on this little railing there with my wife and I kept saying, I don't know, should I go in there? Shouldn't I go in there? She's saying, why don't you just go in? I'm saying, I, yeah, 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 I, I don't know if I can do this. So I said, okay, what have I got to lose? I'm leaving and going back to New York anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
So I walked in and I showed my stuff to Nancy and she says, yeah, I'd like to show your work. And I said, okay, she says, I'd like to tr take a trial first. I'm having a group show coming up. I'd like to put your stuff in the group show. So she had a couple of paintings and again, to my blessings, I, the both pieces sold. And so after that, it was just a, a development of our relationship in my work. Um, we got to a point where uh, that momentous day came when I had told her that I was going to change, that this no longer was going to be the face of my work, and that I was going to start working on these installations. And not only were they installations, but they were politically oriented, dealing with subject matter that is about the Armenian Genocide, which is my background as an Armenian, therefore an unresolved history event, which might cause problems. And she said, that's okay, do it. Let me see what it is. So I remember in 1990, we had the very first show, the first installation. Uh, I, because of my uh, relationship with a lot of people in the political Armenian field, a lot of people came from different parts of the country, New York and stuff like that. A good friend of mine, Peter Berlakin, who's an author uh, and a political activist, uh, the the local Orthodox priest came, a whole bunch of people came, people from the Armenian Benevolent General uh, uh, Association came, and they made an event out of it. It got on TV and all this stuff. And to me, all I was interested in was opening this new brand of work, this new style of expression. The very first day, the, day op the, the, the show opens, there's a Turkish guy out there, uh, uh, picketing the show and handing out flyers. It was so interesting. I said I knew this kind of stuff was going to happen because of the un unresolved issue. And so that kind of followed me for a long time. But Nancy was still willing to handle the work. Uh, and it's followed me forever, ever since then. For the 20 years, I was deeply involved in, in that expression. Um, but without her foresight and without her understanding and her willingness to be willing to take a chance with the artist and what the aesthetic the artist has, it would have never happened. And I think that's one of the things about Nancy that I respect the most is she believes in the people she works with, not so much how much the product sells. So what has Conduit meant to you over the years? Well, Conduit to me has meant home and it's a base. And again, that sense of security comes from the fact that Nancy's willing to support what I do as a person. That doesn't happen in a lot of galleries. A lot of galleries, you either become part of a main stable or you become uh, what they call, you know, uh, their, their turnover, where they make a lot of money and then they support a main stable. But uh, Nancy's completely different. You know, I mean, there were pretty, probably plenty of opportunities for Nancy to tell me, well, I don't know if I want to carry your work anymore because you're not generating any capital. <laughs> you know, you might get a lot of news coverage, but you're not making any money. <laughs> you know, but she doesn't, you know, that doesn't count. For her, it was to give me the stability at least every 18 months to show. And I've done that since 1984. And I'm skipped a beat with her, you know, and it's, and it's always a pleasure to know that that one outlet is there for me. And the one thing I always admire about Conduit and Nancy is, again, she, is, she sees things into the future, much like my wife in her business, and she's willing to take a chance, like move down here to the design district. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people who have moved down to the design district because they saw that Nancy was able to maintain. Because when she first came down here, there was not many. But now, if you walk around, there's quite a few. So, and this, you know, the same kind of initiative that she had when she moved into Deep Ellum. And for me, one of the things, again, that was very important about Nancy and Conduit is that Nancy came from an inspiration that came from within, and she did what she did based on that inspiration. Not on an art education, not on a degree, but because she had a desire to be involved with these things. And that, my... I believe that kind of passion drives you more than anything else. 
We want to thank Robert for speaking with us. You can find more information on Conduit at conduitgallery.com. Watch for other episodes about Conduit Gallery over the next few weeks. Also, look for a link below in the show notes for the full interview with Robert. That's it for our This Week Bios. Thanks for watching. I still got your Polaroid